So it is 2.40 in the afternoon. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It's 2.40 in the afternoon. And we, um, we're not super hungry and we're not on a full belly. Somewhere in between. Hungry, but not with an appetite. And we've been taking it easy, been mostly in the fold response today. And I think those are the main notes to say where I am for this. Snacking on some crackers. We're going to experiment with our states of consciousness and see what we discover, particularly around oxygen intake and heart rate, which is what this little puppy measures. So I can't talk without my heart rate jumping up to around 80. My resting, fully rested, is around 58. And my traumatic responses on the sympathetic end are around 120. A lot of variables in there. By far the most incredible part of all of this is that it turns out I was unconscious this entire time. I don't gain consciousness until 10 minutes into this experiment. Over 10 minutes in to this whole process, I only then gain lucid consciousness. All of this is happening unconsciously. The wonders of a dissociative identity are quite literally never-ending. The magnificence of a multi-conscious mind is profoundly astounding, wildly miraculous. The experiences that a dissociative identity can create based on its neurobiology is truly miraculous. Quite literally miraculous. My oxygen intake dropped to 85. I could tell that I was experience, unconsciously experiencing traumatic body memories. I've grown a tolerance, so I stay conscious even for this experience. Just completed 30 minutes of oxygen treatment. I was at an intake of 85%, oxygen intake of 85%, and a resting heart rate of 58%. 51 to 58. Now I'm at an oxygen intake of 98% with a resting heart rate of 70 to 82. So talking increases my heart rate. While I was typing, I was at 68, and now it's 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82. Seems around 82. 82 for the flight parts. Now I'm going to keep this video running while I experiment and record thoughts as I'm able, although I'll have to come back and record a lot or write down thoughts later because talking messes with my results. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on this puppy. Maybe I could just hold this up to the camera while I do my experiment. Or lean the camera looking at this. Let's try. Hmm. How can I do this? I think I found my ticket. Wow, as soon as I started moving, it went down to 93 for oxygen intake. The second I moved my body, it went to 93 oxygen intake. And it started beeping as a warning. He lost contact with me. <laughs>
tell what's happening with my body right now. So, a bug bite. I wonder if that's why my heart rate went up or my oxygen intake fluxed. Because I was getting bitten by a bug. Or maybe it was before. It could have been before that. When I get bitten by a bug, I lose the feeling of the whole skin. Instead of... Um, instead of just being able to know that there's a bug bite. <laughs> Because my brain was protecting me from the experience, it never got processed at the time, and that's why it was processed as traumatic body memories. Because at the time, my body's like, no, it's okay, you don't have to know about this. I want to protect you from knowing that it's scary. And so at the time, I, I can't feel it because as bad as I... It would because I dissociate and But because of that it was never processed as memories explicitly so it's not in the past, it's a body memory. I'm gonna see what happens when I smoke. <coughs> wow, it increased my oxygen intake and decreased my heart rate. Whoa. Way decreased my heart rate. Whoa. Whoa. As soon as I said whoa, switched up. Now where are we going? Woohoo! Da 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 I love playing my science nerdiness in there. Brilliant subconscious language. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> it went from like 50 to 120 and like that. <laughs> Heart rate variability for sure. As a thing. At 88 right now. 88. Heart rate at 99. Oxygen intake. Okay, I'm going to go back to not talking. Try to.
I don't remember putting this on. <laughs> Funny and scary. Reaching up. Reaching up for this other pillow must have caused a switch. Because that's the last thing I remember. Last thing I remember is reaching up for that. <laughs> last thing I remember is reaching up for that purple thing. And then... And then I remember noticing there was something on my face. So I'm watching this, and I really thought that I had put that on dissociated. I must have been not fully conscious that entire time. Because that was the first time I remember having full awareness. Was that moment after sniffing. Maybe this sniff, after 30 minutes of oxygen treatment, I'm guessing that's what was happening since it was the face mask was on the whole time. Brought me to a lucid place of explicit thought. Because that memory is an explicit memory, and normally I only create implicit memories. And so, I think what was happening is that whole time, up until the pink towel sniff, I was in a protector state. <laughs> but it's so my norm, and I'm so just embracing where I'm at unconditionally, I don't realize how dissociated of a state that is. And so I think this part right here, where I'm just like really confused and everything, is the first time I'm fully conscious this whole time I've been doing this experiment. 